Hello, year nine. So I've got in front of me the coffee stained part of our sheet. And what I'm just starting to do now is just where I added a bit of water, um, it's just made some of my blue just lift slightly. I'm just going to go back round and re-stick down any post-its or little labels just to make sure that they're nice and flat. So just sticking these down really quickly. And at the end of my last lesson, what I managed to do is after I tea stained or coffee stained my paper, I also got a pencil and I started to plot where I was gonna put the nose. So on this composition, I think it's much easier to start with the nose. So I start with the nose, I did a circle from the nose, I then added sort of two circles either side and took it up into the eye socket. And I've just put this in really loosely with pencil. And um, I've then taken, I put sort of some little lines here. So if I sort of show you under here, so I've started to put in the creases around the mouth, approximately where the mouth's gonna go, approximately where the chin's gonna go. Now I want my composition to fill that entire box. So it is worth now spending a little bit of time with a pencil to plot where the different parts of the face are going to go. What I'm then gonna do is I've got two pens in my hand. They are both ballpoint pens. So if I hold that underneath, I don't know if you're able to see that, but um, what I find with this exercise is if you've got two pens, you'll find that the flow of the pens is slightly different. So um, I would spend a bit of time just sort of having a little bit of a play, finding a pen that you quite like the feel of. So like that, this one here, the ink doesn't move as nicely. So this one's, this one's the nicer one to use. And what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to start with the nose. And I'm going to start by looking at where the shadows are. So I'm going to start to pick out underneath the nose. And what I find easiest is I'm going to use a mixture of repetitive lines. So I'm just going to go up and just build into this nose. I also find using really minimal pressure and using lines all going in the same direction can build a little bit of tone. That works quite nicely. Another technique that I quite like to use is a technique that's called scumbling, where you work in tiny, tiny circles. It takes a, a good bit of time. You keep the circles quite close together. But what's quite nice about this method is um, it tends to give you a much softer tone. So it's quite nice for blending tone out in your pen. And I'm gonna start to have a look at the direction of sort of where these lines go. Now, the thing about working in the biro pen is it can be quite unforgiving. So have your pencil to hand. If you feel like you want to plot things in in pencil, so like I'm going to um, start with this nose and I can see things like, you know, where the nose sort of comes in. So I'm going to, he's got his part of his nose there and then it sort of comes in and there's, um, I'm going to use like a scribbling effect to bring a bit of tone in. So I'm going to, I'm going to use lines going in different directions, scumbling, and I'm going to use lighter and softer pressure. That's also quite helpful. I am actually going to draw that eye in, um, in pencil in a moment. So I'll just do a little bit of pen work around this nose and then I'll pause it and I'll go and get a pencil. So I've got myself a pencil here and what I was going to do is I mentioned to you earlier that I had that eye socket there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually put an eyeball into that eye socket. This method I find quite useful for symmetry and proportion. Okay so it's not that easy for me to see here to be fair because I've got the the visualizer in the way but 
put that eyeball in there and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the shape of the eye and I'm going to try and now think about older people is they've got eyes that are especially this man they're, they're sort of quite small their eyes so I'm just going to plot in where some of that skin some of the folds are around the eye we we'll do the same on the other side. Again, tear duct on the outside. Eye not terribly wide. And I just like this because if you make any errors, obviously you can rub them back out again. So it's quite nice and low stakes. Inside that eye, I can see all of the pupil takes up most of the space. Don't forget you then, so you have your iris, sorry, your pupil, and then there's some highlights. Don't forget those highlights. And then this side as well. Again, iris takes up the whole of the eye. Small area where you've got a pupil. And then along the top, that's where those highlights are. Just popping some of the creases just to guide me to here into the down there around here and then as we come down the face I'm just gonna put a few these are gonna be quite helpful for me with my pen the other thing is, is that there's lots of creases coming out of the eye up the nose and up the head as well um, up on, onto the forehead. So I start wrinkles off as lines and then as I go back in with my pen, I'll be able to add them as tone. And when I start to do that, so I'm just checking now, I'm fairly, fairly happy, just making sure, just gonna move, just make sure that your eyes are looking in about the same direction, otherwise it looks a bit weird. And then what I'm going to start to do is, I'm going to start with the centre of the eye, putting in that pupil. And I'm going to start to put some tone around into that iris. And then I'm also going to pick out the highlights because I don't want to go into that area. And then use the same technique that you've covered in previous lessons with how to put the eyes in. Like I said, I'm just going to keep some parts of that bit lighter. And as I go underneath and round the eye. Now, to get to keep highlights in, just don't go into those areas. Go outside of them and it will emphasise them. And that will start to give you some nice depth as well. So if I go into here, um, where I've got a nice wrinkle there. I'm going to start to go into that. I'm going to start to go into where these folds are of the skin. And because we put that coffee down, it's almost like there's a skin tone there already. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to build that up now. And to do that, I'm obviously going to just speed this up slightly, but I just want you to see me starting to build the eyes. There we go. So I'm going to just speed up. So I've started to build his hat in here. I've been using cross hatching underneath that hat to make the tone stand out. So that's where you go backwards, um, or you go in sort of one direction, then you go in the opposite direction, and it creates this cross hatch effect. That works quite nicely for giving you really nice strong dark tone, which is what happens underneath this particular man's hat. 
Um, I'm not going to draw the entire pattern. I can just hint at patterns just by putting a little bit of sort of some lines or something into it. Around the eyes, I've been trying to build up some of these tones, but I've got to start to put a few of the eyebrows in here. So what I'm going to start to do is um, I'm going to add individual. Now, the thing about old people's hair is it's quite light. So what I would recommend you do is squint your eyes and look not at the hair, but look around the hair so that you sort of drawing the individual hairs, but you're sort of leaving that paper still coming through. So I'm not trying to draw lots of lines because it wouldn't look realistic. What I'm doing is I'm, I mean, he's got this really cute, bushy eyebrow. So I'm going to start to put a bit of tone in there. I'm going to put, I'm going to start to go, like I said, in between the hairs. And build up those lovely tones there. I'm going to darken under the eye. That's going to create that nice highlight. Just go around there. So I've got that, the tone of the eyelid happening. And in some places I've used sort of like loose lines just to give me a little bit of bit of tone building up. So the eyes are all right, hair's all right. I put a few of these wrinkles in, so quite a big wrinkle at the top. It sort of goes lighter above the wrinkle. And then there's some tone, it's going to be really clever. You can try and look for where those highlights are, try and keep those in. And then the mouth, I'm going to go back very briefly to my pencil. And I did put a line in, in about here. So he's got these really funny teeth are always really tricky. What you want to do is you want to just build a little line down from the nose. Because you want the little Cupid's bow to be in line with his nose. Because if it's not, it won't look realistic. And then... Just going to start to build the lip. Now, another way of doing lips is to start with circles. And this still works for this, actually. Using the circles helps you to just get some of the shapes. He is smiling, so the corners of the mouth want to point up. Because I put those circles in, that's quite helpful. Um, when I start adding tone in a moment, that's not going to be a lip, it's, it is going to be tone. And then the chin, so it comes down past here to about here is where the chin's going to go. Again, I'm just going to put a little something just to hint at where it's going to go. I'm going to fill it in with Ben. And then I'm just going to put a few wrinkles from coming, radiating out from that chin just to guide where my pencil's going to go. Um, so that's like the top part of the chin. This is going to be the lower part of the chin here. And therefore into the jaw. And notice I'm right down the bottom of that box, which is exactly where I want to be. So taking that time at the beginning to mark out where the face was going to go has been really helpful. Um, I'm just going to put a few wrinkles into there. Just want to check that that jaw isn't too wide into here if you get as far as this that would be brilliant um teeth are tricky teeth are very tricky um i'm going to put a few lines in there and then into there he's got a few teeth showing here then there's a little gap and then there's the next one I've Got that in there. Okay, so now I think I'm ready to start to add my pen. Okay. 
So I've put all of the features in now and then what I would want to do is I'd want to sit and just keep building those light and dark tones. But hopefully now you can see how we can build up that face, working in pencil first of all, and then using a range of different types of lines to build up light and dark tones, including cross hatching, going in different directions, playing around with pressure, so using lighter pressure, um, scumbling, you can work in little tiny little circles um, in some areas, not going in at all helps to create um, that tone. Um, and in other areas, really going back in to build these dark, you know, dark tones. So, I'll let you have a little go.